Cindy. Oh. We wish to speak for a moment about crystalline artworks. Crystals carved into faces and skulls and animals, which of course, both of our friends here are well acquainted. We <laughs> wish to mention when a crystal is carved by a true crystalline spiritual artist, they do not force impressions upon any crystal. If you ask them, they will tell you. The stone tells me what will come forward. One crystal may wish to be a skull, another a jaguar, another an animal's face, a monkey. Another one wishes to be a sphere. They self-represent for this is the shape that matches their physical crystalline their elementals, as well as the energy they wish to channel. When you allow for a skull face or an animal face to appear in a crystal, you are inviting a spirit or collective which is comfortable within this face to then come forward and speak with you, provide visions and energies for healing for you. Both of our friends have experienced this. We would like to step back and allow them to each become erudite on the matter. Oh, real quick. It it's, is. Uh, it's 30 minutes. So I was going to say, we, we can talk about this as uh, Benita comes back. No, yes. you will continue at this moment before we depart, for we are calling in the energies, but we thank you for your awareness of the clock. The conduit Dolly, I'll let is... you go first. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yes, exactly right. They will tell. I mean, this is the case with carvings. It's the case with wire wrapping. Um, when you allow the, the pieces to communicate, you don't disrupt the energy. So we talked about crystals that have been harmed, but then there are the other crystals that desire a specific frequency because that's what they can hold. It's just like people, you know, spending years at a time trying to be somebody else or emulate or, you know, copy or what have you other people, you're going to start to mess with your frequency and be off. With, with, this, with the crystals, it's the same thing. Now, of course, mankind is what it is. And so um, there will be impressions. But so far, I've had the pleasure of um, being with crystals that are already activated because that is a piece of the work as well. When you're connecting with them, when you're connecting with the frequencies that the librarians mention, and especially in crystal skulls, which are great for subconscious healing, and many other things that we talked about um, that you have to wake them up and they in turn will wake you up or parts of you up and, and connect in those ways. But the bridge, the bridge is there. You just have to dust it off. You have to create and clear the path. So um, that's been my experience. I was holding up Xavier. He was, he is not my first baby. My first baby was this big and he was, his name was Jacques and Jacques gets love on occasion. <laughs> Kim, what was your experience? Um, mine has literally been, hey, over here. <laughs> yeah, let's go over here. Literally, it's they, they like I said, with, with Harold, it was, oh, there you are. I mean, it, it's just, they, they vocally make it known. And the weirder part is, I'll walk into a store and be like, oh, because I love looking at crystals, right? Let's just kind of look like the, the bumblebee one that I picked up from you that had the turtle. It's like, oh, we're taking this home. I mean, it was just, you know, it's just my, oh, I just love that thing. It's so pretty. It's so vibrant. So just, you know, it's just one of those things that it's just, I have it sitting out over in my living room because it's just, I just love that. I want bigger one. I want it. <laughs> but it will talk later. <laughs> um, 
but they've called to me and I'll walk in and I'll be like, Hey, I'm looking for X, Y, and Z stone. He goes, you know, we have one left and nobody wanted this. Well, it's because like, well, it's, it's mine. <laughs> you know, um, they've always called to me certain ones. They just, when they, when they need to enter my life, they'd be like, hey, let's go in this store. It's like, all right, I don't know. Let's go and take a look. And I'll find it. Like I'm telling you about my, uh, my amethyst cathedrals that I have. The guy goes, I don't want to take them home. You know, they're 50 pounds each and they're about three feet tall. And so he gave me a really good deal on them. And I'm like, all right, I'm taking them home, you know, um, you know, stuff like that. So they show up when they need to and they make themselves very vocal. Oh, they are loud. And it will come through feeling. It will come through inner knowing for those of us who hear voices. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> but, you know, that connection, that call is a heart call. So yeah. the best thing that you can do is work through your traumas, work through, and I'm saying that very simplistically, it's a different path for everybody and we don't gaslight or minimize. So do the work, um, don't rush through it, but get into that heart space as best you can. And you'll start hearing a lot more than just the crystals. I have books that call me from the used bookstore. Um, so it's, everything has a voice, but crystals are pretty loud. <laughs> Yeah, I'm starting to hear the, you know, but it's funny you mentioned that because um, in the last year, I've done a lot of heart healing work. Mm -hmm. And the more I work through it, the more things are happening. Because I mean, 5D is all about the heart. So you can't get to 5D without it. But the 4D is emotional. So you have to get through that <laughs> before you can get to 5D. Um, but it's really amazing how you start doing that and things you know, like, like I was telling you guys with some of my adventures that I've had, you know, six months ago, I wouldn't have happened. Now it seems like it's, hey, field trip, you know. It's, <laughs> <laughs> well, and that, the heart opens up the space for telepathy. And that's the other part of a communication. Um, so everybody thinks telepathy is third eye or mind. It's heart, entirely heart. So people that are animal communicators, telepathy is what's going on. And so you can have that, like I said, with anything people too. I mean, do you want to, but um, I sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. Yes, we encourage everyone to enjoy your crystals and to feel in your heart space which crystals call to you, those in natural form, those that are enormous or can be held in your hand, those who are carved or polished, which sort of hmm, crystalline structure for each, each detail indicates which sort of communication and lessons, conversation, which energy flow you are compatible with in the moment. Our two friends here are excessively wise, ancient souls. Therefore, they are comfortable surrounded by a vast array of crystals. Yet you will see the crystals in our Time Lord's home is a different variety than the many crystalline skulls and ancient figures in our crystal friend's shop. To be able to do the work that you do while surrounded by so much wisdom, active vocal wisdom is impressive. <laughs> thank you that's a great compliment but I don't know if I can I definitely can't plug back into the matrix so I'm I I don't know if I can work without them around me I don't know about Kim probably feel the same right yeah I, I have them by me so I just like haven't tried that without it and uh that's so part of it also is you know they how they allow me to get where I want to go but they also oh there's my door and I go back to it Mm, I don't angle. have that. I don't know. I don't want to experiment right now and get caught in the ether world, so to speak. <laughs> well, they are your support system and your tools. Even the most brilliant surgeon would have difficulty without a scalpel. Sure. 
honor yourselves for the wisdom and skills and for your open hearts for connection. And we say now it is time for us to bid our farewell or we will chat with you for the next month without stop. <laughs> I'm here for it. I accept the challenge. Blessings, <laughs> blessings. And we invite the conduit to return. 